You hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this channel ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is a Sailor Ink from the Yuramiku series. This is from that first Yuramiku series. I have waited way too long to review this because I just keep using it and I keep forgetting to review it. So this is Sailor's Yuramiku Amamoyoi. Uh, Amamoyoi. I'm going to say I'm a Moyoi. I, I don't know if I got that right, but uh, it's it's that set of letters. And this is a very interesting ink. Inside this box, you'll find a 20 ml bottle that looks like this. Uh, this is one that I was just like, yep, nope, I love it. I have to have a bottle at least of this. And as you can see here, this is going to be a weird one. I love these weird Yuramiku inks. We'll get to some of the new set here uh, in the very near future, but this is one of the original Yuramiku sets. Very cool stuff. So let's see what this looks like on some paper. We're actually going to look at this on several papers because, I mean, A, I usually do that, but B, this ink looks different from every paper I've put it on, I think, and that's rad. So, as you'll see here, look at that swatch. There is There are so many colors. We've got green in there. We've got some pink in there. It's like kind of salmon-y. There's a little bit of gray, I think. It's just kind of a weird one. This one, I would say, is kind of the green of this group, but it's not just a green. It's a green and a million other things. I don't know, at least three other things. But uh, here we go. Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter is my usual paper that I've been using for this stuff. Flow, excellent on this thing. I've had no problems with the flow on this. I've been using it in this Shown Design Ultem pen, which uh, I really like, of course. And I have on here a medium sig, nope, sorry, broad sig, and as I've talked about before, this is a stub italic gradient. It's somewhere between a stub and an italic with a few other features, like uh, it will vary, uh, you know, sort of its sharpness as you go vertical, which is pretty neat, which means I write with this all the time, and it's very comfortable, and it gives my handwriting kind of a unique character, which I really like. So, with this ink, I wanted to make sure that I had a broader nib because I wasn't sure how dark it was going to be uh, or yeah, how, what it was going to look like. So I was like, let's give it some room to run. And boy, does it. It runs great. So excellent flow. Very cool performance. A little bit of bleed on the copy paper. This is your terrible Staples 20-pound, 30% recycled copy paper. And actually, this ink looks pretty boring on here. Uh, it just kind of soaks in immediately. It doesn't get any like weird color shifts or anything. But it's just kind of like a, I don't know, a... I don't even know what to call it, like kind of an ar flat army green, which is weird, uh, but just a little bit of bleed through. I mean, no more than anything else on this bad bottom rung uh, copy paper, but uh, yeah, looks pretty good. No real feathering or anything. A couple of, well, a couple of feathers right there on the S. That's, that's kind of it. So pretty, pretty good on the bad copy paper, which I really like. This is the second one that I've reviewed. Uh, the first one was Seiki, which I still love and still have in a pen. This one's not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm just, it's kind of perfect for this pen, right? Kind of murky and murky. Love it. Very easy to recommend this one. Let's do our water test. Then let's take a look at uh, chromatography and similar ink colors and some more papers. You know the drill. Let's get some water on this little grid here. This does come in those 20 mil bottles. And it is 20 bucks online. You can sometimes find it for a slightly different price depending on where you go. Uh, but about 20 bucks is usual price online. So, got this one from Drum Ghouls. And you can see, like, it's kind of swirling away. We got some green coming up. We got some pink exposed. Very neat. Let's go ahead and mop this up. And yeah, so a lot of the green and stuff came off, but it left behind all the pink, which is interesting. I wasn't really expecting that. So water resistant, I mean, not really, but you will be able to recover your work. It'll just be in pink, which is kind of cool. Maybe if you're doing some art stuff, maybe this is interesting for a wash. I don't really do that, so I don't know, but it seems like that might be the kind of thing that would be worthwhile. There's the chromatography for Amamoyoi, and it uh, looks like I did it twice. And uh, no surprise, they came out the same. So a little bit of pink, but the pink is actually pretty far up the chroma strip here, and uh, not down here where I would expect it to be, given how it stuck around on the actual paper. But you get these like interesting streaks of kind of highlighter yellow and lime green and like bright blue. Really, uh, really neat. All And that all comes together to make this, right? Like, how does 
how does that even happen, right? And actually up close here, you can see like the bits of pink hiding even in this dark green. Pretty neat on that paper. Okay, I mentioned it looks different on different papers. Uh, this is Cosmo Air Snow, which is a whiter version of Cosmo Air Light. It otherwise feels pretty much the same. Maybe a little less, less squishy, but kind of the same. And as you can see here, it looks entirely different. I mean... Look at that. It's gray with a little bit of pink on here. It's closer to Seiki, actually, on this paper than it is uh, Amamoyo, I, I would say. Like, it looks looks much more gray than it does green. So just, like, as a side-by-side, -side, there we go. Not even, not even close. Now, you wouldn't even say this is the same ink, right? I wouldn't. But there you go. There's a couple of papers already. And then let's uh, do a couple more. We'll kind of keep these out because why not? This is my currently inked Inky Fingers uh, book. And this is wheat straw paper. Oops. Uh, there we go. And here we get a yet a different green. This is a, another different green that is actually different from these other two. So gray, kind of a darker green, and this one kind of comes up as a lighter green. Again, with little bits of those like pink or magenta or something in the letters every once in a while. And then here, Tomoe River in this Galen Leather Everyday book. Uh, and you have this, which is a very complex set of colors. And uh, I mean, I think it looks great there. So it looks great on all of these to me, but also different on all of them. None of these four pagers have the same color for Yurimiku uh, Amamoyo. Can I get them all in the frame? Let's see. Uh, kinda? Kinda? So gray, green with some pinky stuff, different green with some pinky stuff, kind of grayish greenish with more pink I, look it's different on every paper so this is an ink i think you ought not to skip um and also an ink that i can't predict for you how it's going to look right and it actually might look different with different nibs i've just been keeping it in this one because i like it in here so much and it works so well i think from a finer nib it might look a little bit different but you know i i actually can't i can't guarantee it you know so, uh, really, really interesting ink, this Amamoyo. I love this stuff. I think these are supposed to be kind of like reminiscent of the color of clouds or something like that. And, uh, pff, I mean, I, this is a dirty, dirty cloud. Like, this is bad. Don't make this cloud over your city. But it looks rad. So, I'd say pick this one up. This one's on my list of amazing inks. So, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And, uh, hey... Take a look at this graph up here. Some of y'all are watching and like still aren't subscribed. I mean, you got this far, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead, just, you know, just do it. It'll be fun. And uh, you'll see me in more videos. And uh, until then, peace out. Whoops, I forgot the I forgot the similar colors. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of colors that are kind of close to this. Uh, I didn't have much, honestly, because it's so strange. But there is Yurimika Amamo Yurimiku Amamoyoi uh, on a Colodex card. This is Ferris Wheel Press Moss Park Green, which is, I think, a similar flavor of green, but it's lacking the complexity that you get from Amamoyoi. And then underneath that, uh, Trouble Troublemaker Kelp Tea, which is a more intense green. And it has some of these same colors, but it's got a different, it's got a different whole feel to it. This one just feels kind of more, it's got like a, a, a greener punch. But these are the only two that were even close at all to Amamoyoi. So that's what you get. Kelp tea, Ferris Wheel Press, Moss Park Green, Amamoyoi. This one's a winner for me. All right, that's it for real. Bye.